Subpart F, testing. Subpart F, just, um, conductor certification final ruling F, uh, um, 11111. Uh, subpart F, dispute resolution procedures. The subpart deal, details the opportunity procedure for a person to appeal the decision for the railroad to deny a certification, read for certification, or to revoke a conductor certification as stated by the Railroad Safety Advisory um, Council, the task statement, one of the, um, of the issues requiring specific report from the working group was starting with the locomotive engineering certificate model with the opportunities are available to, for simplifying a period of the decertification decision of the railroad. Since the first meeting of the July 2009, the working group devoted a considerable amount of research discussing the proposal of ideas simply to the appeals process. While the appeals process provided in the subpart essentially follows the appeals of, in the part of 240, some of the more... Some of the important modifications have been made. Those modifications are discussed below. Section 242.501, Review Board Established. Section derived from the Title 49 241.401 provides the person who is denied with the certification revoke the certification of his or her or her conductor certification revoked may be petitioned the FRA review the railroad's decision pursuant to the section FRA delegates the initial responsibility for adjunction in um, such disputes of the internal federal railroad administration operating crew review board uh, the OCRB although the certain o o o operating crew review board will require instance Issuances of internal FRA. FRA expects that the OCRB will make the makeup of the Locomotive Engineering Review Board with this currently used at Federal Railroad Administration to the junction to dispute under the Part 240. As mentioned in the FRA, except for that if and when and the ch conforming the changes are made in part of the 240, all references of the Locomotive Engine uh, so, uh, LERB Review Board um, in 240 will be changed to the o Operating Crew um, review board and the operating crew review board will hold both conductor and locomotive engineering disputes. Section 242.503, the position requirements to section to derive from the Title 49 CFR 244.03 provides the requirements of obtaining the FRA review of the railroad's decision to deny certification, denying certification, or revoking certification. Um, the requirements contained in the paragraph A through C include the needs to seek the review of the timely fashion of one of the advertising, uh, sorry, one adverse decision in rendering the railroad and should party should note that the petitioner referred to the paragraph B of this section who had his or her certificate revoked, not an employee representative who may uh, respond on the petitioner's behalf. If the petitioner is represented by someone on the petitioner is encouraged to all, so provided the representative's ma name, mailing address, date, time, phone, te telephone number, and email address if available in the petition. Paragraph D to B2 revises the requirement proposed by the notice provision pro notice provision rulemaking and differs from t statute 244.03. In this petition, some permitted by the docket clerk of the you know, Department of Transportation rather than the FRA docket clerk. With this change of process, the Submitting of the petitions of the Operating Crew Review Board will parallel the process for requesting an administrative hearing under the Part 240 and the Statute 242.507. FRA believes this will change the make of the process sufficient for the Department of Transportation dockets as proposed as uh, equipment to process, scan, and store those types of filings. In addition, with filings of the Operating Crew Review Board, proceedings will make become more accessible because they will be posted on www.regulations interested parties should note that everyone anyone that is able able to um, search the electronic forms of all the filings received in the dot D Department of Transportation dockets in the name of the individual submitting filing uh, the filings or signing the filing if it is submitted on the behalf of the association business or labor union etc you may review the Department of Transportation complete privacy act statement published in Federal Register on April 11 2000 volume 65 number 70 pages 197 one nine sorry 19477 to 178 as you may visit the regulations government at, uh, at at www.regulations.gov backslash pound um, exclamation privacy lowercase notice um, capital N P um, paragraph B3 requires petitioners to provide certain information including the email address available petitioners should know that the FRA receives an email address and accepts that you conduct all correspondence regarding the petition of the case of the email paragraph B of the section requires a petitioner to supplement his or her petition with a copy of all written documentation documents in the petitioner of possession or responsibility available for the petitioner for the document. The railroad decision, paragraph B7 of the section, provides the requested by the operating crew review board. The petitioner must supplement the petition with the 
copy of the information under the title 49 CFR 40.329. The, labor, the board, laboratory's medical review officers and other service agents are required to release the employees. That The paragraph also provides the petitioner must provide the written explanation in response to the opera, operating crew review board. Request that the written documents should be reasonably available to the petitioner or are, no, are not supplied. The requirements of the paragraph B7 were added to the clarify. Clarify our petition or responsibility if requested by the operating crew review board with respect to the petition seeking the review of the railroad decision, which is based on a failure to comply with any drug or alcohol related rules or return of service agreement. Paragraph C of the section um, gives the operating crew review board discretion to grant the request of the additional time that this may be made um, prior to the exp expiration of the period original period um, pre prescribed. The operation crew review board can exercise discretion under this rule only cause for the cause as shown as partly will demonstrate the s some justification of, of the operating crew review board to grant an extension of the time similar to the deadline in the paragraph C of the completely missed miss and mo 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 move on, move on under the paragraph 62 would have the alleged facts of con constituting the ex excusable neglect then make mer mere assertion of excusable neglect unsupported facts would be insufficient or excusable neglects or requires a demonstration of good faith and on the party of the party seeking an extension of time and some reasonable basis of the non compliance with the time frame specified in the rules absent shown along with the lines relief will be denied. Paragraph D, when the section b explains the decision of by the operating crew review board to deny a petition of, un of untimeliness and lack of compliance with the requirements of statute 244, sorry, 242503 may be applied directly to the administrator ordinarily an appeal to the administrator can occur only after the case has been heard in the FRA's hearing of the officer. Once the difference between the section of the statute 240 and 4 and 24403 in this time the petition section um, seeking or petitioning seeking the review of the railroad decision would have been to be filed part 240 different depending on whether the person is seeking the review of the revocation of the decision in 120 days or denial decision 180 the section provides the petition seeking for the revocation of denial the decision will be have the file with the FRA within 120 days of the date of the decision were served in the petitioner. Another difference between the section and statute 242, or sorry, 24403 is the under the section of the operating crew review board discretion of the considering untimely filed petitions is not extended to the petition seeking the review of the railroad decision to deny certification recertification. Statute 242505 processing certification review of petition section of the divided, derived from the title 49 CFR 24405 details of the petition for the review of the he handled by the FRA, the, um, but the upon receipt of the petition, the FRA will provide the person with a written acknowledgement of the filing. The railroad will then have 60 days of the date of the receipt of the respondent if it desires to comment on the matter of the railroad comments on the material. Any material will have been submitted in writing, copy, and serve the petitioner, petitioner representative, if any, discussed in by section by section analysis of statute 242503. Operation control, um, Operating Crew Review Board um, will re also ex be accessible on the on www.regulations.gov. Therefore, the FRA will no longer automatically provide copies for the petition of the railroad. The railroad will be responsible for accessing the petitions online. Paragraph D1 has been revised for the notice of the provision of rulemaking to require railroads to provide um, FRA with an email address if available. The railroad should, should note that the FRA receives an email address expects to conduct any of the all in the correspondence regarding the petition or case by email. Um, paragraph has been D3 has been requ um, revised requirements proposed by the notice for the provision of rulemaking differs from the statute of 240 to 5405. The railroad response to a petition will be submitted in the docket clerk of the Department of Transportation rather than the FRA docket clerks. The FRA is will it believes the change will make the more proficient and efficient Department of Transportation dockets is better equipped to process and scan and store these type of filings. In addition, with the filings of the Operation Crew Review Board proceeding will note will become more accessible because they will be posted on www.regulations.gov. Interested parties should note that anyone any, any able to search electronic form for all the filings received into the Department of Transportation docket named an individual submitting the file, submitting out signing the file is submitted by the half of the association, business, or labor union, the union, unit, etc. The view, review of the Department of Transportation Privacy Act is submitted published in federal Registry on April 11, 2000, volume 65, number 70, page 1947778. You may visit the regulations dove at pounds, um, uh, exclamations, lowercase privacy, 
Um, capital N notice. Um, when, um, based on the written record of the FRA, still have, have still still will analyze the railroad decision and make recommendations on the operating crew review board. The operating crew review board will determine whether the denial of revocation certification was improper under the regulation, as indicated in the paragraph. It will be. The Federal Railroad Administration's goal to issue the Operating Crew Review Board decision within 180 days of the FRA that has received all information from the parties. The FRA's ability to achieve the goal will be depending on the number of the petitions filed, agencies, and resources available to handle those of the petition in the given period. A further, further goal will depend on the FRA to receive all ev available evidence. In the petition of the railroad, response do not contain all the available evidence, including not limited to the complete hearing of the transcript exhibits and the color copies of all photographs evidence. If available, the FRA's intention for the Operation Crew Review Board will render a decision of 180 days that will be available for the evidence received. While handing of the petition for the FRA will be same under the 24405, this section has, and this section, unlike the 24405, includes the paragraph F and J through the process of standard review of the Operation Crew View, Review Board will utilize when considering a petition. Those standards are the same standards of the Locomotive Engineering Review Board to, uh, View locomotive engineering um, petitions. The standards were able were added to this set rule to address the concerning of the sum of the members of the working group of the railroad petitioners did not know that the standard review of the operation crew view, crew view, review board would use the considering petitions. Like the Locomotive Engineering Review Board, the Operating Crew Review Board will determine whether the railroad decision was based on an incorrect determination. If the railroad could not hear them, was so unfair so that the cause of the petitioner substantial harm, the Operation Crew Review Board could grant the petition. However, the Operation Crew Review Board is not intended to correct all procedural wrongs committed by the railroad. As like the lo Locomotive en Engineering Review Board, the decision-making power of the Operation Crew Review Board is limited to the proving the railroad decision, overturning railroad decisions, returning in the case of the railroad for additional fi finding. The Operation Crew Review Board is not empowered to, em em to mitigate the consequence of the railroad decision if the decision was valid under this regulation. The Operation Crew Review Board is the only empowered to make the determinations concerning the qualifications under this regulation. The contractual, contractual consequences, if any of the determinations, would have to be resolved under the dispute of the de resolution mechanism that do not require directly involve the FRA. For example, the FRA cannot under order a railroad to alter its seniority rosters to make an award to pack pay to the accommodate the finding of the railroad wrongfully denied certification. Interested parties should not promulgation noted that the promulgation of the rule necessary requires the operation of crew review board of the locomotive engineering review board to determine whether the railroad revoked the correct certificate of the person who holds the engineering conduct conductor certification. For example, in the case of where the railroad finds that the person who holds the conductor engineering certification violates the railroad involving the failure to comply with the provision of the Title 49-218-199, i.e. the part of 218 subpart F is my but, but revoked for the person's engineering certification of the Operation Crew Review Board if petition would have to be fine. The revocation decision would have been proper because of the currently as in an in engineering look cannot have the his or her part of the 240 certification revoked from the violation of the Part 218 so Part F. Paragraph L of this section requires the Operating Crew Review Board to write in a decision to be based on the petitioner including the petitioner representative if in any of the railroad more the paragraph does not contain the requirement that any of the di every discussion of the finding of the fact which may not be appropriate for relevance to some decisions. Section 242.507, requesting a hearing. Section with the parallels of Title 49 CFR 244.07 provides the party that has been adversely affected by the Operating Crew Review Board decision will have the opportunity to request an administrative proceeding as prescribed in 242.509. In addition, with the section details requirements for the requesting of the proceeding, the paragraph C that provides that the party will fail to request an administrative hearing in a timely fashion will lose the right of the further administrative review. Oh, and the o Operation Crew Review Board decision will constitute final agency state as noted by the E, the section the FRA will not schedule the hearings or set in an agenda for the proceeding. The FRA will manage merely arrange the appointment of the presiding officer and will be presiding officer to schedule a hearing of the earliest practicable date. Section 242.509, the section which it parallels the top Title 49 CFR um, 24409 describes the authority of the presiding officer to conduct administrative hearings and procedures by which administrator will be governed like the 24409. This proceeding provided with the section will afford the aggravate, aggrieved party the de novo hearing at the relevant facts of the ad, adu, adduced to the current uh, correct application of this part to determine. In the instances, issues appear legally and were. Um, 
purely legal uh, issues that are purely legal when only limited to factual matters are necessary to determine the issues. Paragraphs of this section provide the presiding officer may determine the issues following the evidentiary hearing only with the dispute of the factual issues. If any of the presiding officers therefore um, grant full or partial summary judgment, the paragraph D of this section provides the presiding officer may authorize the discovery of the authorized presiding officer to sanction willful non-compliance with the permissible discovery request. Paragraph E requires the documentation of the nature of the pleadings of the sign of the signature will cost the certification of factual legal good faith. For paragraph F, the requirement for the service of certificates of service, the presiding officer authority to address the non-compliance with the law and the directive to express in the paragraph G. The provision is intended to ensure that the presiding officer will have the authority to control proceedings or that the official fair hearing will result. Paragraph H from states that the right of each of the party to appear the representative. Paragraph I protect the witness and ensure that the right of the come representation, the right of their representative, representative question. The paragraph J allows the, all parties to request the consideration of the separation of the hearings of two or more petitions who do that so would have been appropriated to establish jurisprudential standards of the operation, option intended and to allow more efficient determinations of petitions and petitions in case where the joint hearing would be advantages. Under the paragraph K, the president officer of the certain expectation extended the period of action required for the proceeding provided with the substantial prejudice would not result in the, to a party the authority to deny or request a submission, uh, sorry, extensions submitted after the expiration provided with the involved performance of the use of the authority as a tool to alleviate unforeseen unnecessary burden and not as a remedy and inexcusable neglect. Paragraph L establishes motion for the appropriate method of the requesting action of the presiding officer. This paragraph also provides the motion of the response for period of the written motions. Paragraph M also provides the rules for the mo mode of hearing and record maintenance, including the requirements of the sworn testimony verb ver verbatim of um, record, including oral testament argu and argument. In inclusion with the evidence to substitute, therefore, in the record, paragraph D N directs the presiding officer to employ specific rules, evidence, and guidelines for the introduction. Evidence permits the presiding officer to determine what evidence may be received. Further, paragraph O provides the additional powers that the presiding officer may ex ex exercise during the proceeding. Paragraph P provides the petitioner before the Operation Crew Review Board, the railroad that took the certification action to its issue, and the FRA mandatory parties to administrate the proceeding. The paragraph Q requires the party requesting the hearing to say Hearing to carry out the burden of the proof, the actions of the conductor railroad will be uh, issued to hearing, not actions of the operating crew review board that's appropriate for the conductor railroad filled the rule, petitioner responding to the hearing, and if in addition burden to each of the party will have the ha hearing, petitioner has articulated. Paragraph Q. Paragraph R provides the FRA mandatory part of the proceeding. All proceedings with the FRA will initially be considered a respondent if, in the, based on the evidence acquired from the filing of the petition hearing, the FRA will not, um, to conclude that the public interest in the safety was more closely aligned with the position of the petitioner than the respondent. The FRA can request the hearing officer exercise his or her inherent authority to regulatory realign par parties that good cause shown. However, the FRA anticipates such situation would occur rarely, if ever. The FRA could realign itself. The FRA wants to cause a function for parties. The FRA represents the interests of the government, hence parties in there. Representatives will have carefully to avoid ethical dilemmas that part might arise due to the FRA's ability to realign, realign itself. Part S and U provide presiding officers with the authority to close the record issue and the decision. Section 242.511, appeals. The section derived from Title 49, C.O. 244.11, permits that the party ag aggrieved by the pre presiding, by presiding officer's decision to file an appeal for the FRA Administrator. Paragraph A provides that no more than the timely to file the presiding officer's decision will constitute the final final agency action. Paragraph B through F allow the rely on the appeal described for the administrative authority to conduct the proceedings. Interested parties should note that the uh, phrase, except for the terms of administrative decision, for example, the remaining of the remaining remand, remanding a case of presiding officer shows the party administrative remedies have been uh, not, not exhausted. In part, part, paragraph E, the section includes the rules and the parties understand that the remand of the remain remand and the in, intermediate decision will not constitute final agency action. The inclusion for the praise of the demand difference in the parties that are not represented by an attorney who might write or well, authorize confused to as whether as any of the action administrators should be considered final agency uh, action. Appendixes. 
FRA has included four appendixes of this rule. The Appendix A civil the penalty schedule similar to the FRA has been issued to its issuing existing rules. Appendix B is both of the operate organizational requirements narrative description and submission of the are required under 242.101 and 242.103. The FRA is not requiring railroad submissions to be made in federal mandated form. The FRA is prescribing minimal constraints of the organization manner of the um, presentation information. The FRA is the required submission is divided into six sections. The FRA requires that each section deal with the different subject matters of the railroad identified with the appropriate personnel to be contacted for the event of the FRA needs to discussion some aspects of the railroad while Appendix B is derived from Appendix B of the Part 240. The one, of the, one major difference is the Part B of the um, index of, to Part 242 makes it clear pursuant to Part um, Statute 242-103. A railroad must serve a copy of the submission on the president of each labor organization representing the employee to serve the 242, part 242. Appendix B provides the railroads while optioning to file the program submission electronically. The FRA intends to clear a secure document submission site with the need of the basic information for each of the company before setting up the user account. In the order to provide success, access, and sure access. Information regarding the point of the contact is required. Anticipated will be approved to disapprove all part of the program generated automated notifications, email, and the railroad points of conduct. Thus, for the FRA would want to each point of the conduct to understand that providing email address the railroad and consent would receive the approval, disapproval of the FRA by email. The railroad also that allows the FRA to the email would gain the benefit of receiving such notices quickly and efficiently. The railroads uh, the chose, chose to submit the printed materials by the FRA must deliver the, the directly specific address. Some of the railroads must choose to deliver a CD, DVD, or other electronic storage format to the FRA rather than requesting access to upload the documents directly to the secure electronic database. Although that will be an acceptable method of submission, the FRA would encourage the railroad to utilize the electronic submission capabilities of the system. Of course, the FRA does not have the capability to read the type of electronic storage format sent. The FRA can reject the submission. The FRA may be available to develop a secure document submission site that confidential materials are infinite and identified and note shared, if I, note shared with the general public. However, the FRA does not accept the information in program to be such confident in the proprietor pro pro nature, pro particularly since each of the railroad is required to share the program submission and resubmission material modification with the president of each labor organization that represents the railroad certificates um, conductor. See Title 42. Um, CF Title 49, um, Part 242-103C. The according to the FRA does not have any timely time does not have the t its time to believe it's necessary to develop a document submission with the address confidential material in this t in at this time. Appendix C is derived from Appendix C in two part in two part 240 provides a narrative discussion of the procedure of the pr making. Procedures of, per of that person seeking certification or recertification will have to follow the furnish of the railroad information concerning his or her motor vehicle driving record. The Appendix D that provides derived from the Appendix F to the part of 240 provides a narrative discussion of the procedure of the railroad is required to employ the administrative vision and hearing requirements of Statute 242.117. The main issue addressed in the Appendix is an acceptable test of determining whether the person has the ability to recognize and distinguish among the colors used the signals in railroad industry. Appendix E provides a table describing the application revocable events. The table to list the revocation of the period, whether that person would be eligible to reduction of the revocation period, whether a person who is certified as both a conductor and an engineer could work either position following the certification or revocation. Um, six regulatory impact notes. Is that for the order twelve eight hundred sixty six of the DOT regulatory policy procedures? The final rules evaluated in accordance with existing policy procedures determining non significant both the executive order twelve eight hundred sixty six, the DOT policy and procedures C, the title forty four FR eleven. Uh, 11034 February 26, 1979. Um, the FRA has prepared the place of the docket regulatory impact analysis addressing the economic impact of the final rule. As part of the regulatory impact analysis, the FRA has assessed quantitative measures of the cost stream expected for the result of the adoption of the final rule the 20 year period and analyzed estimated qualified costs imposed by the industry total $86.3 million when present. The, um, PV percent of 7 percent of the 43.2 million dollars. In addition, with the FRA would incur the administrative cost totaling the 15.2 million with a PV of 7.9 million 
or sorry, sorry, in point six million. Although the numerous co no, numerous costs of the burden of the final rule requirements that the exposed to impose the largest burdens relate to the initial periodic training knowledge of the testing operating test operational test. Industrial dispute procedure process results in the denial of revocation of the conductor certification would be a new requirement that would impose the burdens of the railroad industry, the FRA. As part of the regulatory impact in analysis, the FRA has explained what the likely benefits of the final rule would be provided with a numerical assessment of the potential value of the such benefits. The final rule expected for the improved the railroad safety ensure that all the trains have been certified and trained that the conductor of this general of the final rule should be decreased. The train accidents incidents associated with the casualty damages the FRA anticipates the regulation to decrease switching opportunities, casualties, human factors caused by the train crew injuries. The FRA believes the value of the anticipated safety benefits would exceed the cost of the implementation of the final rule, the table that presents the cost associated with the implementation of the final rule. Um, this table shows the costs Cost of the final rule. Subpart B, a program eligibility requirements. The development of programs is $800,000. Prior conduct employees at two point. $2.5 million, vision hearing acuity at 500000 training at $13 million, uh, knowledge testing at 3.7.5, uh, uh, yeah, operating testing, miscellaneous subpart costs, subpart C, administrative certificate uh, programs, a million, two million uh, for section 242, 203 to 213. 2 million railroad oversight responsibility subpart D terminal qualifications joint operations section 242 301 10 million dollars subpart E denial revocation certification section 242 401 to 2407 2 million dollars subpart F the dispute procedures petition the FRA review board 1.8 million dollars requesting the administrative hearings of 3.21 dollars appeals of the FRA administrative 48 thousand dollars in total number of government costs forty three million dollars to two hundred and eight and forty three million dollars point forty three point two million dollars government costs apart f is at seven point five million dollars regulatory flexibility executive order Regulatory Executive Order 1327 and to ensure the potential impacts of the small entities are proposed considerably the FRA to develop the final rule in accordance with Executive Order 13272, the proper consideration of small entities and agencies rule making the Department of the Transportation Procedures policy promote the compliance with the Regulatory Flexibility Act of Title U.S. Standard 5 U.S. Standard Code 601 in a tenth sequence. The Regulatory Flexibility is, uh, requires the agency to review the regulations assessed for the impact of the small entities. The agency must conduct the Regulatory Flexibility analysis is used to determine certify that the rule is not accepted with a significant impact on the substantial number of small entities. As is discussed in the FRA initiated with the rulemaking requirement of the Railroad Safety Improvement Act of 2008, the final rule of the enhancing the safety of this railroad operation is showing that other per only those persons who meet the federal safety standards serve as a conductor to reduce the rate of the number of the accidents incidents to improve railroad safety. Pursuant to the Railroad Regulatory Flexibil Flexibility Act, the FRA certifies that the final rule would not have the significant impact of the substantial number of the small entities, although the substantial number of the small railroads would be affected by the final rule, few, if any, would be re re significantly impacted. The FRA invited by the interested parties submit the data information regarding the potential economic impact with the result from the adoption of the final rule. The FRA received the comment of the pertinent to those to see the blue below. Consider the making of the determination certification of the final rule. The description of regulated in entities impact. The universe of entities considered as a considered generally included within one of the only those small entities are responsibly expected to be directed regulated, regulated by the Saxon. And for this rulemaking, one of the top uh, type of the small entities is potentially affected on this rulemaking small railroads. The FRA estimates approximately five contracts will develop in conductor certification programs, contractor conductors to the railroads. This cost is associated with the certifying cost, con certifying conductors is the cost of these conductors will pass on the railroads conductor uh, contracting services. A small entity is defined in Title V of the U.S. Standard Code 601 having the same na meaning as a small business concern. Under Section 3 of the Small Business Act, this includes a small business concerning an independently owned, operated, and is not nominated to the field of operation. Section 601 it includes the nonprofit 
for enterprise is that independently owned and operated and they're not in dominated field operations definition small entities additional title for I have US standard code 6015 that combines the small entities of government cities counties and the towns townships villages school districts special districts and populations less than 50,000 a US small business administrative assist administration stipulates the size standards for the small entities to provide the largest afford the profit the railroad business for firm maybe and still uh, classified in small entity as uh, 1,500 employees of the line halting operating railroads or 500 employees for the short line operating railroads. Federal agency may be adopt their own size standards of the small entity cancellation of the small business that administrative the conjunction of the public comment of the pursuant to the authority to provide the small business administrative the Fer federal railroad administrative pub publish the final policy while the formally established the small all entities in the railroad that meet the line of the hog haulage haulage review revenue requirements of the class three railroads currently the revenue requirements of are 20 million dollars or less in annual operating revenue adjusted annually for inflation the 20 million dollar limit adjusted in, uh, and for inflation is based on service transportation board threshold of a class three railroad carrier which is adjusting adopting railroad revenue deflator adjustment the same dollar limited the revenues established to determine whether the railroad ship or the contractor the small entity the government of the city counties and towns the township villages Chagall district special district the population Population less than 50,000 are considered small at needs FRA policy. FRAs are proposed using the definition of rulemaking with the proposed um, policy, proposed rule, no comments were received that pertain to its use. Small railroads, the approximately 682 railroads meeting the definition of small entity described in the FRA extent, was estimates that approximately 627 small entities would be impacted by the final rule. The FRA estimates that the 555 of the 682 small railroads would not impact them because of them would be in effect expect for the final rule. Note that, however, the approximately 125 small railroads that would be in, impacted are sub subsidiaries of large short line holding companies with expertise and resources comparable to large railroads. Many sh uh, small railroads will be impacted rulemaking members of the American Short Line Regional Railroad Association or a um, ASLRRARA. American Short Line Regional Railroad Association. While the active participated in development regulatory action, it is very likely that the American Short Line and Railroad Regional Railroad Association will develop a generic conductor certification program for these members. Use the FRA would assist the, this with the effort. The small railroads will provide the written program certifying the conductors according to this regulation, giving them note of how and the most small railroads operate and the fact that they, that they operate fewer types than the number of the trains, the largest, la larger railroads. The regulation should be burdensome with a small railroad from the larger railroad. Then, given the given the more la limited territory equipment type, the number of the conductors and or committees of the transported small railroads relative to the class two or class one railroads implementing maintaining a program certification conductors significantly less burdensome than the small railroad, but overall a passing per conductor basis. While the FRA does not recognize the small railroads in currently the formal conductor training of the certification program, the FRA believes that a small Railroads currently inform of the programs necessary elements of the formal pro program. The FRA requires information regarding the number of the Type 3 classes that does not have formal conductor training or certification, as well as the number of the conductors employed as uh, by such a road, railroad in the notice of the pro pro proposed rulemaking. Initial Railway Regulatory Flexibility Assessment, the RFI A. Initial regulatory, sorry, initial regulatory flexibility assessment (RFA). However, the FRA does not receive the comments specific for the request. In general, in general, this rule rule will be likely burden burden all the small railroads with the except from its scope and the application. However, the significant burden for if you view and then any entities, the FRA invited the commenters to submit information that might assist the assessing the cost of the impact small railroads and notice of the provision of rulemaking. However, the FRA only received the comments of the com one commenter addressing the cost of the small railroad. The uh, American Short Line R Regional Railroad Association noted that the comments on January 10, 2011 were working general data if and was when and it was possible would possibly po po would post it to the docket. Um, the FRA has received not additional data on the issue. The FRA dis disagrees with the um, American Short Line um, Locomotive Regional 
Railroad Association on the assessment of the comments, and generally it should be noted that the final rule is not a standalone regulation. It is conjoined with numerous ex ex existing regulations, C Part 217 and 218. However, the short line railroad has been responsible for complying with locomotive engineering certificate regulations, LECR. Um, the 49 CFR, Title 49 CFR Part 240 for the over 20 years. But the more the compliance requirements of the final rule identical for the very similar to Part 240. Thus, these railroads likely are already have and assigned personnel finally the procedures have been placed to comply with this final rule. Since the, um, this final rule requires three to four certifications components required of the Part 240 hearing, visual acuity, motor vehicle operator history check, and the knowledge test, the short line railroads would only need to satisfy the requirements once for the individual who will work both as a conductor and engineer. The FRA believes that the training of the employees of the short line will be certified, thus the employee can work either the conductor position or an engineer position as service demands. The uh, American Short Line, Ra um, Short Line Locomotive Railroad, Locomotive, Locomotive Regional Railroad Association commented and proposed and imposed significant new costs to small railroads. In addition, with the ASLL, ASLRRA associated with appropriating appropriate ongoing training, a certain type of certain piece of the proposed contract certification rules and certification itself reflecting uh, the reflection of the conductor has properly trained and demonstrated the ability to play uh, train the safe and performance job duties. However, the FRA notes that the conductor training required for the final, final rules should note that it's not to not to be short lines, but and in most the short line currently afforded the training employees filled fill with the conductor's position. The majority of the training has been in the on the in the form of the on the job training. Followed by the formal informal classroom training on the safety and operating rules. Uh, historically, the OJT of the peer tra training provided by the qualified per this rule making a certified employee here in this m no more ch no more major change to exist practicing and additional costs ex excluding the time recorded to complete uh, ex time required to comply compile the, a list of qualified inspectors. Additional, the final rule have been, uh, has placed a grim greatest emphasis on OJT removed the task analysis requirement for the ta training section training provided with the most most of the small railroads would not change the much if it had under the final rule it would make would be likely to be more formalized and ensure that the conductors receive appropriate training in all areas of responsibility. Thus the additional cost of it should not be significant. The FRA will has met and with and will continue to work with the American Short Line Railroad Regional Association to develop a general conductor certification program that will be used for small railroads. There should be reduced the cost of conductor certification program, the cost of training development of the small railroads. As noted by the final rule, complementary is serviceable by the FRA regulations and conjoined with the section 217.9 and subpart F, part 18, 218, section 238.109, 239.101A2. There will be a cost saving due to the fact that, um, that someone in requirements are current burdens under the federal regulations. The ASL, the American Short Line Rail Railroad Regional Association commandments noted um, one training cost of the small railroads, the FRA completely discussing the cost of the relevant training of remote control operators, RCOs. should be noted that the remote control operators' operation is practiced to provide value p based on the reduction of the train crew numbers. The Army, sh the, sorry, the ASL RRA is a correct of the FRA dismissed with the cost of the related of the remote control operators and initial, initial regulatory flexibility assessment, IRFA. The regulatory impact assessment, uh, or sorry, regulatory impact assessment (RIA), the notice provision rule. Notice provision rules. The FRA and the IRFA and the RIA dismissed the such costs as all railroads, including small railroads, due to the fact that no FRA regulations requiring the use of remote controlled locomotives, the use of the remote controlled locomotives by the additional in the choice of using a business decision. Training of the remote control locomotives is covered by Part 240. Multiple certification are addressed in this final rule. Only the difference regarding the locomotive engineering, the conductor training at the additional modules, the subpart F of the Part. 218 and 239. The American Short Line Rail Railroad Regional a a Association also noted the con a concern over the economic impact of the def 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 certifying the conductor of small railroad with limited personnel. The FRA recognizes the American Short Line Railroad Regional Association concerns. The FRA notes that small small, small, small that small railroads have successfully dealt with a similar issue under the paragraph 240 
for many years without excessive financial burdens being incurred. For the FRA notes the significant safety concern involved with the training of the conductor of a small railroad differently from the conductor of a large railroad with respect to certification revocation. Such treatment would result in disappear, disappear, disparated treatment of the conductors across three classes of the railroad, i.e. the conductor of the Class 1 railroad would not be permitted to serve as a conductor following the decertified event whether the conductor is on a Class 3 railroad who would be involved in the same type of decertifiable event would maybe serve as a conductor, even though that no, not as no less than a safety risk of the person if a conductor for a Class 3 railroad uh, is opposed to an conductor for a class 1 and 2 railroad. Moreover, treating small railroads differently in the instances would leave only the possibility that the conductor involved with the revocable event on the class 3 railroad could they immediately go to work in the class 1 railroad due to the fact that restrictions were placed on the conductor's certificate rather than having certificate revoked. Economic impacts and small impacts small in and these railroads. The certification and temper does not stand alone document in order to get the understanding of the total cost of the railroad industry that forms the basis of the three S. These estimates are more detailed than any specific requirement. The review of the FRA RIA is recommended. The FRA has placed in the RIA in the docket of the rulemaking. Based on the information currently available for the FRA estimates that 8% of the total railroad costs associated with implementing the railroad final rule will be borne in small entities. The FRA has established total cost of the regulation of the 886 6.3 million for the railroad industry. The FRA estimates that 6.4 of the burden will be borne in small railroads. In addition, with the FRA will incur with the cost of totaling approximately $5.2 million. The FRA also estimates the small railroad comprises comprises over 90% of the number of entries impacted with directly regulation. Small railroads generally have the fewer conductors operating in the small territories, allowing them all to meet the requirements lower than overall as well as lower co cost per conductor. Though, Although the substantial number of the small entities will be likely to be impacted, the economic impact of them will, will not be likely significant. Four, significant economic impact and criteria. Previously, the FRA sampled a uh, small railroad and found that the revenue averaged approximately $4.7 million, not discounted in number in 2006. And 1% of the average annual revenue per small railroad is $47,000. For FRA is, estimates, the average small railroad will spend it, it less than $11,000 over 20 years to comply with the additional requirements of the final rule based on the FRA concludes with the expected burden of the final rule, noticing the significant impact of the competitive position of the small entities or on the small entity segment of the railroad industry as a whole. Five substantial number of criteria. The final rule will likely be burdened to all small, small railroads that are not except for its scope of application, thus not above the rule will imply to impact a substantial number of small railroads. Six certification. Um, pursuant to Plate Regulatory Flexibility Act, um, of Title V, U.S. Standard Code 605B, the FRA certifies that the final rule will not have significant impact of substantial numbers of small entities, although the substantial numbers of small railroads will be affected with the final rule. Note that the entities will be impacted impacted. See paperwork reduction. Information collection requirements of the final rule are being submitted for the approval of the Office of Management and Budget under the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1995 to Title 44, U.S. Standard Code 3501, a 10 secret. Once in sections, sections of the containing the new information collection requirements are duly des designated estimated time fulfilling each requirement as follows. Um, waivers and petitions responding uh, Average, you got your uh, CFR subsections, your respondent universe, the total annual response, average time response, total burden response. Uh, basically, it talks about what we talked about. And there's the sections that we went over, the like such as uh, substance use and vision acuity, acuity. It shows uh, in training, 214, 199. All right. Um, it goes over revocation 242. We we talked about these parts up in the beginning. It shows the chart and the chart. All estimates include the reviewing instructions, searching existing data, regathering, maintaining needed for the reviewing information for the information of a copy of the paperwork package submitted by the Office of Management Budget. Contact Mr. Bro Robert Bergen. 
Brogan of 2-4-9-3-6-2-9 or Mrs. Kimberly Tone 202-4-9-3-6-1-3-2 via email the following address Robert Brogan at dot, dot gov or Kimberly Tone at dot gov. Organization individual designing submitting comments of the collection of information requirements should direct the Office of the Management Budget o Office of Information Regulatory Authority Affairs of the 725 17th Street in Northwest Washington, D.C. 20503. Attention of FRA doc this officer with comments may also be vi vi sent vi via email. The Office of the Management Budget is following the OI. Um, the the OIR under submission of the OMBEOP.gov. Uh, Office of Management Budget is required a decision concerning the collection of information requirements containing the final rule of 30 to 60 days after this publication. Document of the Federal Register, the comment of the Office of Management Budget is asserted that they have a fully effective the Office of Management Budget receives and written a day, 30 days publication. The FRA cannot impose a penalty pursuing the violation of information collection requirements, which does not display the Office of Management Budget Control, if required, the FRA intends to obtain the current, current Office of Management current m m number, control numbers for any new information collection requirements resulting from the rulemaking act, such action prior to the effective date of the final rule. Office of Management of the control number will, when assigned, will announce the separate, separate notice of the Federal Register. Federal impl impl implementa implications.